Okay, so in this video, I'm going to finish the Starbucks example with calculation of type 1 and type 2 error probabilities. So, uh, by the way, this is kind of new because uh, like we are applying the type 1 error, type 2 error probabilities uh, idea to one tail test. There is no difference. The, the framework is the same. Remember, type 1 error happens when you reject the true belief but type 2 error is when you fail to reject a wrong belief. So keep that in mind and let's calculate the probability. Uh, by the way, we are going to use this critical value. right? Keep this critical value. 5% keep this 5% critical value upper side. Okay, first, type 1 error probability is still the same as the significance level. As I said, it is textbook definition. They are equal. So you don't need to do anything. I am not going to. Mm -hmm. uh, so I will show you the algebra. So type 1 error happens when you reject the null hypothesis. Right? So you reject the null hypothesis if the temperature is too high. The sample average temperature is too high, higher than the critical value. If this happens, then you may have type 1 error probability. And when your belief is correct, so your belief is 40 degrees. So when under this belief, you are going to standardize that probability like this. X bar becomes Z. Uh, and uh, sample average is also standardized minus 40 over 4 over square root 100. So actually you don't need to do this this part will become 1.64, right? 1.64 is the number we used here. Same number is coming up again. So uh, as it should be, it is 5%. But And as I said, you did not need any algebra. It is automatically 5%, should be 5%, right? Okay, now type to error, which is not straightforward, like type 1 error. So now I will assume that actual temperature was slightly higher than it has to be. So 41 degrees, so your belief is wrong. Then type 2 error probability is the probability you fail to detect the difference. You like actually the temperature is too high, but you may think the temperature is good enough, low enough, then that is type 2 error. So that happens when the sample average is, sample average happened to be low, lower than the critical value, right? This is critical value. If the sample average is lower than the critical value, you may conclude, oh, temperature is okay, but that is actually an error. So then, now again, standardize, but here we are using 41 as the parameter because that is our assumption in this case and then you calculate the probability and type 2 error probability is nearly 20 percent right about 19 percent and then from this type 2 error probability you can calculate the power as 100 percent minus the type 2 error probability which is 80.5 percent so that means uh, if the uh, temperature is actually 41 degrees, 80% you can detect that. 80 per, with 80% probability, you can tell, oh, this temperature is not good. But nearly like 20%, you fail to see the difference. So uh, the hypothesis testing goes like this. So type 2 at a probability is calculated in a similar way. Actually, once you calculate the critical value, this is easier because there is only one inequality here. One tail test has only one inequality, so easier algebra here, right? But idea is the same as what we have done in the first half of this chapter, okay? Okay, uh, it's, uh, it's another example I prepared. So, so Affordable Care Act. So, uh, Think about this. So before the the Affordable Care Act is legislated, this is the distribution of 
health coverage, health insurance coverage. So about like say 13.6% are uninsured. But after the Affordable Care Act uh, legislated, roughly according to this organization, uninsured the, the proportion of uninsured people decreased to 9.9%. So 90% of people now have insurance. So just motivated by this example, I'm not saying anything political, but just let's use this as an example for our uh, numerical exercise. I will assume that 80% of people had health, insur health insurance before the legislation of Affordable Care Act, before the policy change. So then, and I suppose that I believe that P is the probability P is the probability after the policy change, right? So previously, before the change, it was 80%, but after the change, I don't know. So I believe that, I believe that it would be 80%. There is no difference. But I also assume that it is unlikely that the probability falls, decreases after the change. So this policy change will have no impact or positive impact. Negative impact does not make any economic sense. So I will rule that out. So I am going to use only these two alternative hypotheses. Uh, use these hypotheses. So the null is 80%, right? But alternative is greater than the null, uh, greater than 80%. It is an upper tail test. In this case, if I reject my belief, that means this policy change has a positive effect, increasing the coverage, health insurance coverage. Okay, that is what we are going to do, one tail test. So then as you may expect, this is another binary distribution example, right? So suppose that from, the, from a survey after the policy change, I found that 86% of people had uh, coverage, right? So, you, and now you remember, uh, P is, P, this P percent, percentage of success is the mean, and also standard deviation is implied by the percentage, okay? So, but like, so we have a few percentages. First, I have belief, 80%, and also I have data, 86%. So then, you have to be careful which standard deviation you are you have to use but uh, if you understand what, how it works it is also straightforward so under the null hypothesis if your belief is correct then the standard deviation would be 0.4 right so the t statistic we are going to calculate the t statistic based on this uh, standard deviation because t statistic is calculated based on your belief. So calculate this, you get a t statistic of 1.5. Okay, first t statistic approach. Do you reject the null or not? So oh, the point here is you need to find the correct threshold for 5% significance level. Let's see, it is here. So you need to take this number. Earlier in the previous chapter, we used 1.96 for two tail test, but now it is one tail, so you have to use 1.64. Back, back to our question. So our threshold is 1.64, that means if the t statistic is greater than 1.64, you would reject the true the, the belief. But now it is lower than the critical value, I mean threshold, so you do not reject the dollar hypothesis. The answer is B. Right? Uh, <clears throat> so and if you compare that to the p-value approach, p-value is calculated only on the upside, upper side, right, upper tail. So uh, your p-value is calculated as 
probability greater than 1.5? It is, from Excel, you get 6.681%. Uh, because p-value is greater than your significance level, 5%, you cannot reject the null hypothesis. That is also consistent with a uh, t-stat approach. Okay. Finally, if you calculate a critical value, your critical value will be your belief 80% plus something standard error. So again, standard error here is based on your belief, so you are using 0.4 as, as uh, for the standard deviation. So this 0.4 is coming from your belief. And, all, okay, and Z alpha, Z alpha is 1.64, the same threshold for T statistic. Anyhow, the result, the critical value is 86.56%, right? So 5% uh, critical value is like this. Okay. And again, you cannot reject the null hypothesis because your observation is 86%, which is lower than the critical value, right? So then, then you know, in this example, what I'm doing is, here is okay. So only when the observed probability is greater than eighty-six point five percent, then I would accept the positive effect of the policy change. Otherwise, I won't believe uh, any positive change in the policy policy, right? So that is what how we can interpret the hypothesis testing in here. Now let's use this critical value to calculate the error probabilities. Okay, idea is again the same. So we are using this hypothesis, null and alternative hypothesis. Now, first let's calculate the type one error probability. What is the type one error probability? So the answer is C. You don't need any algebra. Type one error probability is always the significance level, right? I keep saying this several times and you don't need to do anything. Type 2 error probability, right? By the way, so we are going to assume that actually the co health insurance coverage increased to 90%, right? 90% is the new uh, uh, like coverage after the policy change. But if you cannot detect that increase from the data, then you are making type 2 error. And what is the type 2 error probability? Can you calculate that? And the hint here is, now we assume that the truth is 90%. So this 90% also implies standard deviation 0.3. So remember this standard deviation. Okay, so let me show you uh, the answer. It goes like this. So because we assume 90%, we have to use parameter 0.9 and standard deviation 0.3. So your standard standardization goes like this. Your critical value, so probability uh, of not rejecting the null hypothesis, even if the coverage probability increased to 90%. So you fail to reject the null if X bar is smaller than the critical value. And this probability is standardized, subtracting mean and standard error here. So blah, 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 you get 12%, right? So your type two error probability is 12%. Even if the coverage probability increased by 10% point, still you may not see that in data uh, with 12%. Also, that means the other 87.5% uh, is the power of the test. Like 10% point increase is correctly detectable with this much probability. That is the power of this test. Okay, this is the end of this chapter. Thank you for watching. We finished a hypothesis testing chapter, two chapters. So this is maybe the most exotic uh, concept in statistics, but it is widely used and like you may you may have heard about p-value a lot of places. So but I I think it is not taught well in many like textbooks and in many courses. So I want you to I wanted to 
give you the correct idea uh, where how it is uh, formulated. So the philosophical background and conceptual idea was explained not only in two chapters but over like from the normal distribution chapters. Uh, I wanted to explain this. That's the goal of like the most recent five chapters. Okay, in the next chapter, we are going to change our gears and um, we will uh, start something new, something different. Okay, see you in the next chapter. Bye.